So you have a basic costume comprised of pieces that you already had at home. You look good, but you can look better. It's time to level up. Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer, and this is the companion video to my video Medieval Costume DIY. So if you're just starting to put a costume together, make sure to watch that video first. That's levels one through three. Not all of the elements of your costume need to be at the same level all at once. Your boots might still be at level one, for instance, with say work boots or something. Sneakers are never acceptable in my opinion, but you might have a gorgeous wool tunic. I think the scalable approach is a very easy and cheap way of putting an outfit together without having to worry or stress about buying everything all at once, which can be expensive and intimidating. And in some cases, having all of your pieces be at a lower level, but then having one very nice high level piece could bump your entire costume up and make it look really, really good. In other cases, it can look very odd sneakers. I have a vengeance against seeing tunics, no matter how nice, over blue jeans and sneakers. So by the end of level three, you'll look good. You have a shirt that represents itself well, you're not wearing sneakers or blue jeans, maybe you have a blanket cloak and some sort of hood. But at this point, you really need a tunic. And this alone by itself is pretty much enough to bump you up from level three to level four. It is gonna require that you need to know how to sew or that you know someone that knows how to sew or you're gonna have to go buy something ready-made or get really lucky with a thrift store find that you can alter. Many of my pieces are made out of faux suede. I would still consider these costume grade as they aren't particularly useful or practical, but they look the part and they don't stand out the way some Halloween costume fabrics do. Lining your garment with linen, as I have done to my jerkin, helps add to the overall feel of the piece and can help strengthen it a bit more. These, for the most part, are unisex. Women's should be a little bit longer, slightly different silhouettes, but just add a belt and you're set. Men's fashion has really taken the L in modern times. Now men, continue to upgrade your shoes if you can. You might not be the type of guy that can go to a thrift store and find women's shoes that can fit you, but if you are, then there are some great options out there. Both these pairs of shoes are thrift store finds, both of them are women's shoes, and both have served me very well. They're not necessarily in the greatest condition, but they look the part, and I think better than the options from my previous video. Other than that, for anyone, in order to increase your shoe game, you're going to have to either learn how to make your own leather shoes or go ahead and purchase something online. I think both men and women should avoid having boots that have pronounced heels, as heels were invented specifically to catch in stirrups for horse riding. So if your character or persona doesn't ride a horse, it doesn't really make any sense and it's just an accident waiting to happen. While at the thrift store, grab whatever else you can. Things made of materials that you think you can repurpose, things with interesting textures, blankets for cloaks, shawls, leather jackets or coats without zippers, gloves, anything you can find. The nice thing about medieval fantasy settings is that they are generally actually a compilation of various different time periods, so within a certain range, you can get away with things looking believable. And in this case, as we're still beginning, we're only at level four, I think that believability is more important than accuracy. So here's a little tip for you from my personal experience. If you can, wear two belts, one just for your tunic and the one to keep all of your kit on, your knife and your pouches or whatever. That way, if you need to take your kit belt off, you're not actually undressing yourself. Think about upgrading your hood next. The hoodie modification is nice, but I still prefer this one. It's much more water resistant, more rainproof, it's much warmer, and it's a very simple design. It's called a Viking hood, and it's essentially one long rectangle that rests here over my shoulders and forms the hood sewn to two squares, one in the front and then one in the back. Go ahead and make yourself some bags or pouches. They can be made out of any material that you happen to have quite easily. So just pick the material, cut out the shape that you want, make two equal halves, cut loops or sew on loops for a drawstring at the top and then sew all of the other edges together, turn it inside out, and you're done. This is a very simple bag made out of faux suede. It's just this rounded trapezoidal shape, two sides sewn together, and then it's got an opening. And this satchel is also made out of faux suede on one side and then some other felted fabric on the other side, and it's reversible. So it's not historically accurate, but it serves its purpose and is very practical. Thrifting or repurposing pieces into your costume can work very well, as we have already seen, but at a certain point, it can only take you so far, and you may find yourself ready to be making purchases or actually crafting items that you can add or upgrade to your costume. But before you do that, you need to ask yourself a very important question. What is this costume for? 
Are you still going to Renaissance fairs just a couple of times a year? Are you going on your own adventures, that is camping or hiking of some sort? Are you participating in events, either historical or fantasy? Are you LARPing? We're still nowhere near the territory of stitch counting or thread counting, and you may never feel the need to be at that point, so don't necessarily feel pressured to. But if you are, that's pretty epic. Good for you, much respect. Take that into account when you're doing your upgrades. But everybody keep in mind that just because textbook historical accuracy might not be your goal, that still having all of your pieces actually be what they're supposed to be, rather than being representations only looking like what they're supposed to be, is going to result in your costume being more functional and therefore more believable. Going to make the transition from being a costume into being garb, actual clothes just from a different time period or world. My leather breastplate compared to this leather armor I bought online is the perfect example of this. Both are made of leather, both look good, and neither are historically accurate. Aesthetically, they serve the same function, but this leather armor would offer very little protection, while my breastplate is actually hardened and takes inspiration from historical 14th century breastplates. That doesn't necessarily mean that one is better, it just depends on your goal. So set a goal for yourself and make sure that every element of your garb brings you closer to that goal, whether that's something you're making or something you're purchasing. If you're good at art, unlike me, then you can do character art of what it is that you envision. What I personally do is I have several folders on Pinterest that are labeled either Ranger or Witcher or whatever, and then those are comprised of various elements that I plan on incorporating, whether that's drawing from historical references or drawing from references from TVs, movies, or games. TVs, literal, literally drawing from the TVs. If you're planning on crafting or purchasing new elements, it's very important to know exactly what it is that you need and why you need it and how you expect it to function. So you know the difference between what is a good investment and what is ultimately a cool, but needless purchase. Cloaks are an excellent example of this. You might know that you want a cloak, but not all cloaks are the same. What do you need the cloak to do? What features does it need to have? What do you plan on doing while you're wearing the cloak? And all of these questions once answered will point you towards the type of cloak that you should either craft or look to buy. And if you haven't seen my video on the best cloak for a medieval adventure, then you can check that out up here. Hopefully you find that helpful. Now I can't tell you what it is that you need, but you will likely find this advice universally helpful. Do buy a properly length leather medieval belt or two. Do get a brooch or two. One I have for my hood and then one for your cloak, maybe more. Do invest or craft some leather bags and pouches, especially big enough to hold the important items that you need, like your phone, wallet, and keys. And do upgrade your shoes. And don't, I repeat, do not, for your first purchase, get a pair of leather bracers. I know it's tempting, they're cheap, they look medieval, it's your first piece of armor, a hood or a belt aren't as exciting, but I promise you will thank me. Functionally, they serve no purpose if you're not wearing other armor to begin with. If you could only buy one piece of armor, bracers should not be the first thing you reach for. They make regulating your body temperature incredibly difficult, and they're not even particularly comfortable comfortable to begin with, and they're a pain in the butt to put on. If you absolutely feel the need to make that purchase, then get them with buckles, not with laces. But I really think that that $40 can be better spent elsewhere, and aesthetically, the same sort of look can be achieved either with arm wraps or gloves. Now, if you wanted to make your own as sort of a fun project, custom so they fit you exactly how you wanted, that's a fun project. Go ahead and do it. And if you are starting to make the progression into adding armor to your costume, then I think gambesons and helmets are the things that you should look at first. Finally, start adding personal detailing to your outfit, which at this point I would consider not a costume but actual clothes. And this will add depth and turn you from a background character to an actual human being with a life and personality and culture and your clothes will reflect this. Do you have religious or sentimental jewelry? How do you style your hair based on your profession or your social class? Do you have a special pouch dedicated to an item specific to your trait? Do you wear an apron? How often do you replace or repair your gloves and shoes? Do you have a trinket on your belt made from tackle and fish parts because you come from a fishing community? Why do you wear your pouch or your cloak in the way that you do? 
Do you use antlers in all of your decorating? These are the important questions. And these alone are not enough to make a costume, but they elevate what you already have and turn you from a guy wearing shirt and pants into an actual person. And now that we have all of these personal elements, which people might not even notice, combined with a good solid base in character design, now we can start antiquing the costume, the garb, to make it feel lived in. And the way I'm personally doing this is by simply doing what my character does while wearing what my character wears. So Mike Anderson actually smells like campfire smoke. And this is a very long way of doing that, but it's fun and I get to share what my activities are with you guys. Wear whatever you have whenever you can. Get used to it, get comfortable in it, learn how you move in it, what needs to be added or adjusted or changed. And this is the level of believability that costumers have to think about so that an actor can just put on their costume and then immediately be in character. But we don't have that luxury because we are designing our own costumes, so we have to create our own realism. I designed this so that here at level 5 everyone has a base foundation to build on and add to, but where you go next is up to you, because a higher level knight is going to look very different from a high level ranger. So this video ends where your journey begins. Congratulations, you made it to level 5 the true level one. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see what else you can do to improve your medieval aesthetic, you can go ahead and check out these videos. I'll see you soon. In the meantime, I want to wish you good luck on your adventures.